Hello, this is Rob Cubbon. So here are some security tasks you can put into effect right now. It could be the difference between a hacker getting into your site and finding it too difficult while they're in there to do any damage and then going on to the next one, or it'll just stop um, multiple hacks occurring. It's that prevalent, it's scary. You do need to do these things. Let's get on with it. Now we know the two most important things you can do to reduce the possibility of getting hacked. Regularly change hard to guess passwords. So that's one thing. Second thing of course is to keep everything updated and don't forget to throw away any unnecessary directories, folders, files on your website. But apart from that, what else can you do? Well, there's an awful lot. I've been going through this article at wordpress.org about hardening. Most of you, I think, will have cPanel. If you want to get a hold of the databases and change the databases, that's where you do that down here. But if you want to get hold of the files, and that's what we'll be doing now, then go into File Manager. But first thing you should do when you access the files, either in the server route or the website route, control click or right click and change permissions. And here you want to be looking for any folders that are 777. They all should be 755 as this one is. And check that for all of the folders, 755. It shouldn't be 777. And then if you go into public HTML, this is the root of your website. And these folders should be 755 and the files should be 644. The reason for this is if they are 777, it means the world can write on the files and execute the files. Keep a lookout on your website for things that shouldn't be there. Now you should know the general setup of a WordPress website. These are the very familiar wp-php files and then the free folders wp-admin, wp-content and wp-includes. There shouldn't be anything else in there. Another thing is that you must make sure that you don't list any directories. You don't want anyone going to a folder in your site and seeing the contents of that folder. You need to make sure that you disable directory browsing. You don't want that enabled. Get in touch with your host and see if their directories are enabled. Okay, let's go on to the next security task. And to do this, we're gonna add some lines to our HT access, or should I say our .ht access. Where is it? We can't see it. That's because it's a dot file and we have to go to settings and show hidden files, dot files here and save. And there we can see our HT access, dot HT access. Again, I said it wrong. And right click and edit that. Now what we want to do is in hardening WordPress, we have some lines of code that block the include only files. And what we're doing here is blocking access to files that are in WP includes. So we put that there at the beginning. Very important you don't put it within the beginning and ending WordPress tags here. And while we're about it, we can put these lines in to deny access for anyone surfing for the WP config file. It contains details of your database's name and password and username. So we'll put that in there in the HT access and save changes. Then we go back to the site, test the site, go back to the WordPress backend, test the WordPress backend. Looks like it's all working. Back to the next task. And the next task means editing the wp-config.php itself. So select it and click edit. And we want to put these lines here right at the bottom. Let's put them in. And what this does is disable editing in the dashboard. So you can't edit any files in the dashboard like you can with theme files sometimes. And that means if anyone that has access to your WordPress administration area, that they can't edit the files. That's bad enough, but it will stop further damage being done. And we'll save changes and test the website and test the WordPress backend. 
So there's one more thing to do from the Hardening WordPress article, and that is to prevent PHP execution in the uploads directory. The WordPress websites I've had the most trouble with are the ones with the most user-generated content. So when you're allowing users to add content and upload files, you're already exposing yourself to a larger degree of risk. One of the websites I used to have, I've actually got rid of it now because it was such a target for attackers, allowed users to upload images. And all well and good, they can upload images, they're not gonna do any, any harm. But if the attacker manages to upload a PHP script and then can execute it, then you're in trouble. So what this does is denies all PHP scripts for inclusion and execution in the uploads directory. Everything that's uploaded to WordPress goes through the uploads directory. So if you deny PHP execution from that directory, then you're cutting off this ability that attackers may have to upload malware to a WordPress website. So we copy that and we put it in a new HT access file, which lives on the root of the uploads folder. Here's one I've prepared earlier. I haven't called it .ht access because it would disappear on my computer if I did that because it would be a dot file. So I've called it something else, htaccess.txt, and then I'll change the name on the file manager. There is the file and the kill PHP execution code. So we go inside WP content and then inside uploads, and then we go upload, select that file, go back to the uploads folder. There's the file we just uploaded but it's not gonna do us any good at all like that. We need to rename it .htaccess. It's got to be exactly like that, else it won't work. Rename file, that is done now. So we test the website, test the back end. Okay, those are the things that I didn't know. The things that I did know, of course, most importantly, update plugins. Here's two that are out of date. Okay, we'll update those to remember what I said, keep your plugins and themes updated. Don't have more themes than you need in your themes folder. The way you can do this, here's mine, it's only got one of course. I can't show you on this screen because I've only got one theme, but if I did have another theme, it would be a box around about the size of this box here, and all you do is click on it and then delete the theme from within inside the WordPress backend. Lastly, of course, get some sort of WordPress security plugin. And I've been advised that WordFence, the free version, is one of the best ones out there. You can spend more money if you want to do malware scanning and other things like that, but I'll leave that up to you for now. There's a few points on security. I hope I haven't left anything out. I hope this has helped you. If there's anything you can do now, that will take you one minute to do to enhance your WordPress security, your website security. I would very much urge you to do it right now. I don't want to see you hacked. My name's Rob Cubbon. I'll see you in another video.